Hello, my friends of Foundry. Another opportunity to talk to you, and it's my privilege to be able to do that. I count it every time I get a chance to talk to you, if you're watching this at all, to say, hey, hope you're doing well. Hope that uh, as we're getting closer and closer and closer to back to normalcy, quote unquote, and it really is. I think we are. I hope that you're staying healthy. And, uh, hey, I got my shot last week, first one. And I'm still living. So, uh, you guys, if, if you have the opportunity, I think 18 above is going to be a little bit. Um, but, you know, do what you think is right. And stay safe, for sure. Well, we're going to finish up to this evening or this afternoon, whenever you're watching this, uh, with our talk about purpose. We've been talking about the biblical worldview, and that can be a kind of a theoretical, esoteric, philosophical kind of thing, but it really gets down to biblical worldview is what does it mean to you? How does it change you? How does it affect your life? <clears throat> and I think that's the critical question, really. So I like ending with this. I think it's a good good ending, and that is that you need to find what is your purpose. It's a struggle that we all have. There, there are times in my life, so like, man, am I am I really fulfilling a purpose? Am I, you know, we 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 look for it, we try to figure it out, try to see if we're doing it. We look back at the end of our lives and say, was it worth it? And, and it's, it's one of those things, I think, that's part of being human and being part of human that's been made by God. Now, I won't go over last week. And if you haven't looked at last week, I'd encourage you to do that before you look at this one. But we looked at how the world kind of sees what purpose is. And it's in happiness sometimes. I, my purpose in life is to be happy. So I'm going to choose a career. Uh, a spouse, uh, a place where I live, a career, all those things based on will it make me happy? And you will find that it does and it won't. <laughs> it's kind of the way it is. It does kind of gives you that full feeling of happiness and wow, I'm, I'm so excited about what's happening. I've got a new job or I've got a new boyfriend or girlfriend or I've got a new car or, and there is a, a, a rush of excitement, but then it goes and happiness kind of goes. And if it's based upon things, it's not going to be there. Fulfillment, a uh, sense of personal worth and freedom to do whatsoever. And I talked about all those and kind of knocked them down a little bit. So what is our purpose? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Uh, and it goes back again to what we've been saying. That at the center of the biblical worldview is that God. God is at the center. Remember I told you what are the first, what are the four most important words in the Bible? In the beginning, God. Those are highly critical because if we believe that it is true that God exists and that he is the creator God and that he is involved in our lives today, then it changes everything. We learn about all the things that took place and Jesus being the fulfillment of redemption and all of those things it, it talks about, it reveals the heart of God. And the heart of God is that he really does love his creation. Now, it's interesting, when you stop and think about it, why did God make us? I look in the mirror the morning and I say, why in the world did you make me? Maybe you have that same feeling sometimes. I can tell you this. It is not out of need. God does not create because he needs to. 
because he has to. Uh, he doesn't create it in order to figure out what love is. We've talked about this already. Love was perfectly expressed within the life of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, doing an eternal dance, praising one another, loving one another, enjoying one another perfectly. So love existed well be before creation. So it's not out of necessity. It's not out of, I got to learn something and what is, I got to experience something. God does it because he is a God of delight. He is a God of joy. He's a God of, of love. And out of the overflow of the abundance of his joy and delight and love, he has creation. And he loves us so much. Remember, we're the last ones to be created. And God said on that day, it is very good. He creates us in a way that we can enjoy things, life. He creates us with a, the, the ability to, to mirror him. In, the, in what he enjoys and what he loves and what, what it brings him eternal uh, gladness. He says, this is what I want you to have as well. I want you to experience this. So he creates a beautiful garden. And in that garden, man and woman experience completeness like the world has never seen since. Together and in harmony with nature and one with God, Everything as it should be. That's the way God created it. And that's the way God wants it. So when he creates us, he wants us to experience that oneness, that, that great joy, that compassion that he has. Why don't we? Well, back to the garden again. You know why. Adam and Eve, listening to a beautiful serpent, said, we think we can do better. This is not enough. We want more. We want to be like, we want to be God. And so they take of the fruit, turn their backs upon God, and immediately there is a, a breakage in their relationship with one another, with nature, and with God. There's a psychological, social, personal, spiritual division at the very moment that they were disobedient. And we lost, we lost what it really is to experience delight and joy. And we've been looking for it ever since. Uh, Saint Augustine lived, I think, in the fifth century thereabouts brilliant theologian and he wrote these words speaking to god and speaking of god he says thou that's god thou hast made us for thyself o lord you've made us for yourself o lord and here's the second part so that first part is you created us and you created us so that we would experience joy and, and to be one with you because that's where the great joy is because you as the creator really truly know what joy is know what good is and only as it is it mirrors you can i really truly experience the fulfillment of joy so he says you have made us for yourself O lord here's the second part and our heart is restless until it finds its rest in you our heart is restless. You see, as a result of the fall, our heart is restless. We're looking, we're searching, we're trying to find what is it, what is it that makes me satisfied, makes me joyful, makes me complete. And Augustine got it right. He said, our heart is restless. We're looking, looking, looking until we find our rest, our completion in you. Till we find what we're looking for in you, O oh God. That's it. That's purpose. 
The purpose is only found as we find ourselves in God. It's the only place we find it. Let me find this <coughs> excuse me, passage if I can real quick. <coughs> A little tickle. <clears throat> Here's what Paul writes. And he writes to a group of people that he loves, the Colossian church. And he says, for this reason, <clears throat> since the day we have heard this, we haven't stopped praying for you. Now, here's what he's asking for. Are you right? This is what should be our prayer for us. We're asking that you be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Why? so that you may walk worthy of the Lord. That's your life. Fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the knowledge of God. That's your purpose. Being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience joyfully. Do you hear that? This is what he's saying. He said, if you start with knowledge of his will and wisdom and spiritual understanding, you get in a relationship that is real and viable and growing with God through Jesus Christ. The result will be you'll walk worthy of the Lord and please him and bear fruit and grow. Would you like to have a life that when you get to the end of it, you say, man, I had a life that was growing. It had fruit. That means what I wanted to do came, to ba came about. The things that I planted in my life grew up and, wow, they were great. They were tasty. They were wonderful. And I pleased the Lord. You can't do it, guys. You cannot do it. You cannot find your purpose apart from a real daily relationship with Jesus Christ who loved you and gave himself for you. You've got to grow in him. You've got to learn to love him more. Let me find out one other verse here. I had, a, I had some, a page, page of verses and I left them in my office, but that's all right. I can find this. Psalm 86, if I can get to it. Psalm 86 and verse 12. All right, one more page. One more page. Hang in there, gang. I will praise you with, my, with all my heart, Lord my God, and I will honor your name forever. Man, that would be a great verse for you to write down, put on your bathroom mirror. Listen to it again. I will praise you with my with all my heart, Lord my God, and will honor your name forever. You see, I, th I think that's a great way of saying the purpose of my life, am I honoring God, am I glorifying him, am I praising his name forever? Is what I'm doing, where I'm going, what, what college I'm going to, what degree, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is, guys. As long as you're doing it to honor and glorify God. In fact, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Do it all. So I, I, it doesn't matter to me if you, whatever your major is. Mine was music. It was singing. Um, some of you, are, I, I know we've got Ben as geologist and, and uh We've got others in, in theater, uh, Izzy's in theater, and I mean, I, I just all over the place. That's great. We got careers going, wonderful teachers and nurses and doctors and lawyers, and it's wonderful. Doesn't matter as long as you're doing it to honor and glorify God every day. Let me end with this verse. It's one of my favorite verses. It is second, or I'm sorry, second chapter of Ephesians, verse 10. 
For we, let me put it this way, for you, for you are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, a good purpose, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. God is going to be with you as you find those things that honor him. I love that word, and I'll finish with this. We are his workmanship. The Greek word is poema. Guess what word gets from, comes from that? Right, poem. Poem comes from that. You are God's poem. How about that? you God's poem. And he is working on you. And he's prepared things for you. And as you seek him out and follow after him, you will find the purpose for which you were created for. And what is it? To honor and glorify God through whatever means it might be. But boy, if you can find that, how fulfilled will you be? Well, guys, thanks so much. Next week, it's going to take a few weeks as we're heading up towards Easter to look at some of the things about Easter with you, okay? Thanks again for following through on this biblical worldview. It's been a good, for, good uh, review for me as well. See you later. Bye-bye.